Hi, everybody. Happy Tuesday. The Tuesday, the 27th. I think the deuces are wild, right? It's 2 22 22. And we're doing break 11. But of 2022, top series one. Big thanks to this group for getting into it. One spot gets you three, so let's triple you up. I think this is the last case of series one we have for now until we get more. All 30 teams are in. Let's roll it, randomize it. Three and a one, four times for each list. One, two, three, and a one. Fourth and final time. We got Aaron down to Aaron. Three and a one, four times for the teams. One, two, three, and a one. Fourth and final time. And we got the Mariners down to Tigers. After four. And here's how it shakes out, Aaron with the Seattle Mariners, Harry, you got the Yankees, Aaron with the Nats, Reed with the Red Sox, Aaron with the Angels, Corey with the Rangers, Aaron with the Royals and Guardians, Corey with the Padres, Reed with the Reds and Brew Crew, Harry with the Strohs, Reed, Cardinals, Blue Jays, Orioles. That's uh, three bird teams right here. Aaron with the Mets, Marlins, White Sox, and Rockies, Harry with the Twins, Aaron with the Dodgers, with my Dodgers and the Rays, Tampa Bay Rays, nice, and the Braves. Reed with the Giants and A's, Bay Area teams. Aaron with the Pirates and Diamondbacks. Corey with the Phillies. Reed with the Cubbies. And Aaron with the Detroit Tigers. Let's sort all this by column B, alphabetically by team. And we're going to pause the video. When we come back, we're going to see if there's any trades. And then we'll, uh, we'll bust open that case. Stick around. We'll be right back. All right, welcome back, everybody. No deals were done, so that list here remains the same. On 2 22 doing 2022 Top Series 1 baseball. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. Thanks for making us part of your Tuesday. Choo Tuesday, maybe? We're going to find out. So once again, just, just joining us, this is our last case of Series 1 baseball jumbo for the time being until we get more. Personal breaks, Instagram Live at Jaspi Breaks may have some personal boxes left over, possibly. But big thanks everybody for joining all of these Series 1 breaks. Starting with the uh, the Topps Rip Party, which was a lot of fun. The Top Series 1 Rip Party, we, we ripped, what, nine cases that night. As uh, we were, thanks to Topps for letting us break that a night earlier. So that was a big treat. And thanks to everybody else who just kind of kept the Series 1 train going. I appreciate that. So the Akil Badu box topper goes to Detroit. That'll be for Aaron. And away we go. Settle in, relax, and enjoy enjoy the show. Hopefully we can get something monstrous out of here in our last case. Um, I don't think we've pulled a we I don't think we I, I don't think I've pulled a train whistle hit yet. Maybe Jesse on Instagram a number of nights ago got a one of one city flag patch card, I want to say. But I don't think we've seen a traditional super fracture one of one or out of five or anything like that. We've seen some nice stuff though. A lot of great short prints. Pulled my first super short print yesterday, which was really awesome. Some nice autographs, etc., etc. So, let's see what we got in here. Mm -hmm. 
All right, good luck. Oh, there it is. Corbin Burns usually reveals a Wander Franco. Now, these multi-cards, I've been saying this each, almost every break, but there are enough of these cards where we can evenly distribute some cards to, to each team right there. If they, if sometimes they're numbered. If they are, then we'll do a randomizer between those three teams. But but yeah, mostly they'll be evenly distributed. There's Wander Franco, our first base. Wander Franco for Aaron and the Rays. Our first relic is Wilson Contreras for the Cubbies. That's going to go to Reed and the Chicago Cubs. City flag patch card, which I think look really cool. And the gold and silver is not numbered, but of course all cards should. Another Corbin Burns, another Wander Franco. Generally, those base Wander Francos fall fall one per box. No, Wilbur, this is our last case of Jumbo for now. And our first auto is Yoel Pozo. Rookie auto for the Rangers, Corey with Texas. Got an Ernie Banks die cut. Sometimes those die cuts can be numbered. I've seen, seen one of those like that. Not too common though. And we got a Harrison Bader, 142 out of 300. It's a nice shot. Good photography there. Cardinals, Reed. So the out of 300s, the, I think the front isn't any uh, isn't any different, but it's, this is, these are just the advanced stat cards, so the back is different. 142 out of uh, 300. Jazzy J, what's going on? And what do we have here? Do we have, why are these three cards flipped around? Are these all short prints? No, that's card 43, not a short print. Salvador Perez, card 43, the serial number at the bottom, not a short print. Brock Holt, 43, not a short print. Hmm. A little trickery there. Hey, thanks, Jay. That's, this is, I feel like that's why we've been around for going on seven, eight years now, something like that.
Uh, I mean, they, they might they might figure it out. <laughs> no, we've we've got a good team here. This is why we we've been we've been successful. We got a good good crew, good community of collectors that visit Jaspies, and we've got a good team here as well that keeps that keeps everything humming. And there's a now generation, 51 out of 299. Yeah, sometimes these can be numbered. Red Sox, Reed with the Red Sox. Jeff Bagwell relic for the Astros. It'll be for Harry and the Strohs. Piece of his lumber. All right, silver packs. Sometimes these packs, the cards that are out of these silver packs, sometimes they can be autographed. If they are, they'll be flipped around, um, usually. Or they can be numbered. Oh, like this one right here. That's numbered. Nice Francisco Lindor to 150. For the Metropolitans, that'll be for Aaron. It's 146 out of 150, Aaron. Nice. Box one in the books. Next box. The box topper is Jared Kalanick. He is supposed to be a future star. Box, box two of six. Good luck. Mike Tower, what's up? Who was or were the last player or players with the baseball hobby hotness that Wander Franco is seeing? Um, Shohei Otani, Aaron Judge, Fernando Tatis Jr., Jason Dominguez, But you got me thinking, Mike. I don't remember. Like Dominguez was more of a is more of a prospect, right? There were there was some prospect hotness there. There's Chris Taylor, from my Dodgers that goes to Aaron. But I'm trying to think who are like rookies going into 
going into a season, a regular season. Because I feel like Aaron Judge, really, did, his market really didn't gain steam until the first couple months of the season, right? Like, I'm trying to think of when the last time we did a Series 1 where it was, there was a definite, like, okay, like, that's the guy we want to chase. That's what everyone wants to chase in a Series 1. I think it's been a minute or two. It's Pete Alonzo, City, New York City Pride. No, I don't. I don't recall Jordan Alvarez being like hobby hot, like going into his first like full season. You know, where he was a rookie in like a series one set. Maybe Tatis Jr. I think Otani was just hot from the get go, just because of all the hype that was already around him. I feel like Aaron Judge. It took a, maybe a month or two into the season before there was a real serious push from the hobby market in general. So just some some good timing with with Wander Franco here. You know he didn't end up being a, a, a an RC a rookie card last year, and he had a pretty pretty good season. You know, and he's got a lot of upside. So I think that the it was kind of like the perfect storm where Series One's coming out, and he ended up being the big name to chase. So, which is good. Yeah. Thankfully, some of the bigger names, like o the Otani market, remember, slipped for a year or two just due to his injuries and whatnot. There's Kyle Seeger for the Mariners. And it'll be for Aaron. But then, he got Hobby Hot again after, after his performance last year, his MVP for performance last year. great thing about this series one is that I know I know Wander Franco is obviously the big chase here but oh, speaking of Aaron Judge there he is I know Wander Franco is the big chase here but you know any of these rookies could have a breakout season be a surprise 1394 out of 2022 I suppose Aaron Judge was kind of a surprise right I think when he came up for a for a cup of coffee right in 2016 People were the Yankees fans were thinking about they wanted to trade him. The uh, he only batted 179, four home runs, but then look at what happened next year, 52 home runs. And probably when that series one came out, the Aaron Judge year, I don't I don't know if he was really making that much of a buzz. And sometimes spring training buzz can help as well. I think, was it Pete Alonso? I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of players like that, but I think for me, a recent one for me in my memory, just, albeit a little weak sometimes, <laughs> my memory's not that great, but I want to say that Pete Alonso had a really good spring and that kind of ignited a sort of, a sort of uh, Pete Alonso chase and then he went on to have a great season. Yes, if you for for minor leaguers who are not on the official forty man roster, they are able to they are able to continue with minor league spring training camp and get games going. I wonder with Mike's wondering, Mike Towers wondering with minor league, but not major league training camp, how that might affect the hobby. Yeah, I don't know. I think overall, you certainly don't want to miss too much time. I think I think we are going to miss time. It's looking like, but basically, it, I'm 
my guess, and it's just a guess, my guess is and hope is that if we only if we only lose like if we get baseball started sometime in the month of April, right, the regular season. You know, I think I think people I think we'll be okay. I don't think there'll be too much maybe some short term you know, damage to the hobby market, but I don't think it'll be that it'll be that bad. If it starts, if it starts getting into like May, mid May, that kind of thing, I think that then you'll start seeing some more medium term, longer term sort of issues. At least for this calendar year, you know, maybe baseball might not be as hot. But yes, and Joe P is absolutely right. It's it, ultimately though, I think it is good. You know, in a the silver lining for losing some regular season games may be that we're going to be watching some more minor league baseball and so you know if if a player has a has a hot you know week or two you know in the early minor league season that might help people might be looking for that guy's bowman first or their rookie cards and stuff and be like or their bowman first i guess I mean, not rookie cards but tommy lastella 94 out of 99 this is the vintage back card right there so it feels a little it feels papery on the back giants that's going to be for reed so yeah so maybe you know, I suppose if like MLB Network, if they're smart about it, I would I would broadcast minor league games, right? So if they get some TV time, it'd be, yeah, it'd be great for the youngsters. They'll get all the attention, like Joe's saying. I think it'd be pretty great. And again, that that might that might reignite some older product where people are like, hey, where's that? You know, where's that? Uh, 2019 Bowman draft where, where the player we thought was just some rando now ends up being like a, a name that that is worth chasing. So that could be a good good thing. Here's a nice Wander Franco Future Stars box topper. I think I have some top loaders that are exactly that shape. No penny sleeves though. Be careful. Nice one for the Rays. That's going to be for Aaron. <laughs> yeah, we do have to just talk to the major leaguers playing in the Jaspies parking lot baseball league. That's a that's a dangerous parking lot though. It's there's it's there's a slight it's a slight incline to it. It's got a very short, it's like a, it's like Fenway. It's got a very short left field. We don't want to, we don't want to accident, accidentally put baseballs or wiffle balls in, in our neighbor's balcony, which we've accidentally done a couple of times. I suppose we could hit away from the houses, but then if it, we might end up with wiffle balls on the roof or onto a major major uh, street out there, Pacific Coast Highway. We don't want to start any accidents. Right, every parking lot does have the irregularity, that's for sure. Just like, just like not every baseball stadium is the same. studio here. All right. Next box. Good luck. And we've got a Los Angeles Pride card. Clayton Kershaw. That'll be for Aaron and the Dodgers. City flag patch card. There's his teammate, Andre Jackson. 
Corbin Burns, Wander Franco. Yeah, Jose, don't sleep on that first off line. I think we, we ended up canceling a filler. So one less thing we got to do and more full spots available as well. So let's get into that. Yeah, man, if baseball, if that lockout continues, that, that will be troublesome for the neighborhood businesses. Like, like Wrigleyville. You know, I know there's a big, you know, they, I mean, they, they do a lot of business on game days at the bars and shops around there, so hopefully it won't take too long. DoorDash was available to deliver stadium food to people like from other, like from other restaurants. I wonder if people take advantage of that. You know, uh, they ha they've done that at Dodger Stadium. Uh, I th I think here at Hermosa Beach we are we are we are uh, far away from that delivery window, but yeah, I think last summer or maybe two summers ago, DoorDash would allow you to get some certain items from from the Dodger Stadium menu, like hot dogs and garlic fries and stuff like that. Nothing nothing too crazy. Um, Ray's once again, Aaron with the 1987 design. Wander Franco. So we've seen the base, we've seen the jumbo, we've seen a smaller wood frame one. Maybe we can find some numbers. There's a Jose Canseco 1987 autograph. Nice one for the A's, Reed with Oakland. I don't know if DoorDash still delivers Dodger Stadium food though. That might have just been a limited time only sort of situation. All right, there's Mike Yastrzemski, 727 out of 2022 for my rivals, the Giants. That's going to go to Reed. That's right, Reed has the Bay Area teams, Oakland and San Francisco. That redemption card is juice. Not allegedly. I think I think he's admitted it, right? Jose Canseco. Canseco, Jose Canseco was a guy that was pegged as a possible 50-50 guy. 50 home runs, 50 stolen bases. I think the last player that got close was uh, Alfonso Soriano, I want to say. I think he was either a few stolen bases or a few home runs, one or the other, short. Did you really? On eBay, you sold a rip card to Conseco's former bodyguard. He has a bunch of interesting Conseco stuff for sale on eBay, huh? Where does, where, where does Jose Conseco live these days? I feel like he's a, I feel like he's in, probably in Arizona or Southern California, right? We got a nice black border, Carlos Rondon, or oh, Rodon. For the White Sox, Aaron, 
These black borders, all, all the cards are, are white borders, so the black borders really pop. 65 out of 71. Game use base. That's pretty cool. And we got the Fresh Prince of Bel Air, Will Smith. In West Philadelphia, he was born and raised. Playground, I'm pretty sure, is where he spent most of his days. Chilling out, maxing, and relaxing all cool. Etc., etc. What happened? A couple of guys, they were up to no good, started making trouble. And in his neighborhood, that's why he ended up a Dodger here in Los Angeles. All right, we are halfway through this six box break. Three more to go. Got another, we're on a good track here, about 30, 30 minutes or so. There's Ryan Mountcastle, box topper. Jazzy J, Jazzy Jeff, Jazzy J saying, yo, I've seen the new Bel Air, kind of boring. Yeah, if you're not into drama, then yeah, I could see I could see how some people would see it's boring. It's a very different take on it. I think it's uh, I think it's interesting. I've been watching it. So, I don't think it's anything like groundbreaking, but it's an interesting take on some familiar characters. They made Uncle Phil too soft? Is he, I guess? Yeah, maybe. I don't know. Maybe he'll, uh... Maybe, maybe he'll, uh, he'll flex a little bit later in the season. Who knows? You know, maybe they want him to start off looking a little soft. Just for character development, Jay. Dramatic background behind the crawl. Yeah, I don't know if they're gonna. I mean, they they have done some fan service and sort of name checked some moments and stuff like that, but from the sitcom in this current drop the Bel Air drama. But I don't know how they're gonna approach the uh, the Carlton dance. I'm sure that's something that people are gonna want to see. How they'll do that in this sort of dramatic format. I don't know how they're going to do it. Maybe they won't even address it, but it'd be, I'm curious. We got Pete Alonzo, New York City pride, city flag patch for Aaron and the Metropolitans. Got a Wander Franco. Welcome to the show insert. Another Ray for Aaron. <laughs> yeah, maybe just a, a Tom Jones cameo. Speaking of which, we haven't seen TJ in a while. I've been, I'm going to check in with him at some point.
we got a Paul Molitor autograph. Red. Old school brewer. Fareed. Six out of 25. Nice, nice Babe Ruth die cut for the Yankees. We got a Michael Brantley, 86 out of 499, green parallel for Harry and the Astros. And he doesn't dance yet. Okay. Might see it happen. <laughs> I think if Jake Berger of the White Sox kind of makes it, becomes a becomes a star in that city, they'll they'll have a Jake Berger burger. They'll sell Jake Burgers at the park. There's Rafael Devers, 101 out of 299. Welcome to the show. And that'll be for the Bo Sox, Reed. Reveals a Wander Franco. Yeah, I need a short print of Wander Franco. I need a numbered card or something like that. I haven't seen one of those in a while. There you go, Mike Tower. Now you're thinking, maybe, maybe the Sma maybe Smash Burger and and Jake Burger could kind of work out a deal. When he hits a home run, it's a Smash Burger. I mean. The promotional opportunities. When Jake Berger hits a home run, Smash Burger will donate X amount of dollars to Jake Berger's children's charity or whatever. You know? There's some possibilities there. I think Jake Berger was actually on track to was on track to make his major league debut maybe last year. But I think he had he did his Achilles or something like that or a ACL or something that knocked him out for pretty much a year a calendar year so set his progress back a little bit all right we're getting there folks two boxes to go yeah Jake hits into the second deck maybe a double decker burger double decker There's Alec Baum, let me a little ding in the corner there, which is always the risk when these are just rattling around in there. Uh, that'll go to Corey and the Phillies. Let's 
Let's see what we got. No. I see where you're going with that, Mike Cower. I've not pulled an atomic parallel of Alec Baum. There's definitely atomic bomb opportunities there. That would be the play call. That would be the call from the broadcasting booth. What's up, Logan? What's going on? Happy Tuesday. There's an Aaron Judge, New York City Pride, city flag patch for Harry and the Bronx Bombers. Nice. Alec Buss, is he a, is he a Buss? He won Rookie of the Year. Not a great season for him, but he could he could turn it back to back to 2020. I think he's still young enough to give him some time to shine. This Mike Trout die cut. And we got a Josh Lowe autograph for the Rays. That's going to go to Aaron in Tampa Bay. Joe. Yo. Uh, how many tops uh, jumbo cases do you need? I know you need at least one. I need one? none. Do we have more? We have two left. No, I I did the last one for for group rakes. Okay. That case is, I think Nick wanted to. I think that's the store case. Okay, this one. That one over there. This one. Right. Yeah. I will. Jeff, good enough to finish. Yeah.
and we got a Tatis Jr. Blue Border. That's for Corey and the Padres. That's pretty nice. And we got a Jorge Soler, 673 out of 2022 for the world champion Braves, Aaron, with Atlanta. Mark McGuire die cut. Kettle Marte for the Diamondbacks is your relic for Aaron in Arizona. Piece of his lumber. Pretty good player when healthy. He's battled a little bit of injuries. He was on my fantasy team last year. Silver Packs. Silver Packs. Silver packs. All right. Nothing too crazy there. Last box coming up. So we got future star Joe Adele up there. Hopefully, he becomes a future star. That'd be good for the hobby. Definitely has the talent. Uh, no, the the blue border 1987 cards are not numbered. I think they're they're just a, a parallel, but I don't think they're too common. I don't think you see those too often, so. Be shorter printed, more shorter printed than some others. All right, final box, and we'll do obviously we'll do a little recap at the end here. Good luck. Now we 
we've got Byron Buxton. Minneapolis Pride City Flag Patch for Harry and the Twins. Two oh seven out of two ninety nine. And I think we've got a short print coming up for the Giants. It's Tommy Listella. No, not a short print. That's 43. That's what happened last time. Oh, it happened again here. It's card 43, 43, 43, and 43. Those are just commons. Trolled. Trolled. By Topps Series 1. Sorry. Oh, and a redemption. It's Andrew McCutcheon for the Phillies. 1987 Topps Baseball autograph card. Andrew McCutcheon for Corey and the Philadelphia Phillies. There you go. So that's our last auto of the, uh, of the case. Let's see if we can actually find some real short prints. Maybe some low-numbered cards. I think we have one more relic to go, right? Yeah, they're, they were tricksters, Logan. Trixie Hobbits. That's Mitch Keller. 688 out of 2022. And it'll be for Aaron and the Buckos, the Pirates. Is that a short print? It is. Six zero are the final two digits back there. It's Joey Gallo short print for Harry and the Yankees. There you go. Good makeup call here. Greg Maddox die cut, Jackie Robinson, And we got Austin Meadows to 499, 369 out of 499 green. There's a Wander Franco. 
Another base. And what are we going to close out with? Raphael Devers, Gold, Will Smith, Will Clark. And there you have it. Silver packs, yeah. Cobra Corb. We haven't seen anything big out of those silver packs in a case or in a few cases. So let's see what we got. Uh, Jake Berger. Jones, Clemente, Guerrero, and an Anthony Rizzo number. 88 out of 150. And that's for the Yankees, that'll be for Harry. And that, my friends, is that. Let's do a quick recap. This was a random three random team break, number 11. Keep your eye out on jazbeescasebreaks.com for more nice Andrew McCutcheon redemption. The Joey Gallo that we passed by was a short print. That Paul Molitor, out of 25. Black Border, Carlos Rodon, Jose Canseco Redemption, the Wood Border, Wander Franco, that Now Generation to 299, uh, that was out of 300, Advanced Stats, Contreras and a base Wander Franco, and we also got a, uh, a Wander Franco Jumbo as well which is pretty nice there you go ladies and gentlemen that was a uh, random team break number 11 series one uh 2022 edition i'm joe for jazbeescasebreaks.com thanks for watching thanks for getting to all these breaks and keep your eye out on jazbeescasebreaks.com for more when we whenever we get some thank you we'll see you next time for the next one Bye bye